if you haven't seen this entire series on this, um, definitely go and check it out. This thing was a, was a trial. <laughs> this car and the GTO have been haunting me for a while and I had to get them done. Um, we're gonna finish off all the old projects before we get into anything new because I don't want to be the channel that doesn't prove that their stuff works. Back in 1994, Mercedes AMG offered a V8 conversion for this car. If you look up Petrolicious' video on it, that was a $120,000 conversion, and I can completely understand why. When you're going into these projects, you might be getting it over your head. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened. And I'm not gonna recap, because I really don't want to. Halfway in, I realized where we were, but then there's no turning back, not for me. So I'm feeling much better about that. It's running. Then ran into a couple more problems, all wiring, and we're gonna take care of that with a Holly Terminator Max. And that's all this is. Thousand bucks, you get a standalone computer to run your engine, and for 1,500 bucks, you get the transmission controller with it as well. We really want to thank Insta360 for sending us their 360 1X camera. It's got a six axis gyro for flow state stabilization. Now what that means is we will be using this 360 camera for a pile of stuff. We'll tell you a lot more about the camera and the discounts at the end of this video, but let's get into the Mercedes. Here we go. All of this that we did is going to be gone. And even though it's neat here, the guy that did this wiring harness for me, um, wasn't really honest about his capabilities and I've run into um, no start with fuel pump, uh, bad connection on the Mercedes end because we tried to tie some of the Mercedes stuff into it. Couldn't give it back to the customer as is and mentally I couldn't keep on it. I had to walk away um, for my own sanity, but we're gonna take care of all that right now and get this thing doing some burnouts. Here we go. It's funny. You walk away for a little bit and then you come back and you're like, what was I thinking? Why would I do that? Part of that was the red intake. We painted it and it looked, thought it was a good idea at the time, but it doesn't really work. Uh, so we're going with a black intake. This was another one. I'll paint that other one again and use it for something else. Um, the valve covers will probably paint them black and we're probably going to get them inscribed yet with the CNC. Once I am 100% happy with this, uh, I did have to change the heads. When I ordered another 5.3 block, they gave me a 5.7. Frustrated and broke as shit. I put the other heads back on again because there's nothing wrong with those heads. I needed the 6.0 heads to drop my compression down to 9.5 if you're using a 5.7. So keep that in mind. If you're using a 5.7, you're probably using the heads that are already on there. If you're using naturally aspirated, you can put the 862 heads on there because that'll boost your compression a little bit but you can't do that with uh, Choo Choo Boy. Now we are just going to clean up the wiring. So we're gonna get rid of the HP tuners and the computer, and we'll get into that um, with the Holly system here. So this system, I would say, gets your car running up to about 90%. So um, in a safe tune, you're gonna get everything that that car can put out um, through this little computer. Now, if you're going drag racing and you want every 10th of a second, you can do that with this by going into your laptop but basically the touch screen is just like, do you want this, do you want that? If you click something that you shouldn't, it'd be like, are you sure? Cause you're probably gonna do damage. You're like, no, I don't wanna do that. For that reason, uh, we'll go over this real quick. Um, basically just your main harness coming in, which goes to your battery, nice and long uh, leads, fuse right there. We've got the max, so this does the transmission control. Nice long leads, one for your vehicle speed sensor and your valve body controls. And then there's also turbine speed, which is for 2009 and newer transmissions. So we won't use that because we're using a 06. Relay for your fuel pump, I believe, and your fuse for your fuel pump. The relay and the fuse for the transmission and it needs its own control. So set, wire those separate. You got some key, key powers and then each one of these is labeled. And then basically your engine harness, which is your map, your MAF. If you are going boosted, you need to buy a MAP sensor for it. We'll put the link down below for that. Just because you need a three bar. If you're running naturally aspirated, you just run a vacuum line or a line to right into the computer. This will stay bare and we will run our MAP sensor. This ground goes to your cylinder head for your coils or your spark plug. 
Again, it's very late at night, so sorry if I'm mumbling. I've got my coils down below, hidden nice and neat. So down below there. So first thing I am going to do is pull my um, ignition even and my ignition odd out of the harness all the way back. So I'll pull this loom off and then I can run them separate only because uh, my exhaust gets in the way on the, on the uh, Mercedes here. So I'm feeling even better about this. So before I was okay with it getting running, but I knew that there was something wrong yet. The reason we went with HP tuners is because we went with the 4L60, which we built, but uh, there was nothing that would control that transmission without a standalone. So we kept the HP tuners because it was able to shift the transmission. Um, before that system would have cost you about five grand. Now this is 1500 bucks and you got um, a very affordable tested tags that say this harness works. If there's an issue, there's tech support. There really is no reason why you wouldn't put this in your budget right from the start. So here we go. Okay, so I've got the engine harness plugged in. It's very, very straightforward. All of them are marked and it's just a matter of rooting it so that it looks nice and neat. Because I have my coils down below, I opened up the whole harness and I moved my coil wires down separate from the rest of the harness. There is a fuel pressure sensor on this one that I'm not using. That's this little guy. Other than that, um, you have to be specific when you order if it's drive by wire or drive by cable. We are drive by cable, so that means the plugs for your throttle body are a little bit different. If you have a front mounted camshaft sensor, um, there's, there's either a sensor at the back, that was the earlier generations, uh, because we went with an LS7 camshaft, it is, the drive is on the front of the cam. The cam wires are reversed. So to get a proper cam sync on a front mounted camshaft, you have to reverse the wires. Keep that in mind. If you are going naturally aspirated, your one bar map sensor is built into the actual ECU with this little blue vacuum line coming out. Take a vacuum sensing from the intake and plug it right onto here, you're good to go. If you are going boosted, you need a three bar map sensor, part number 12592525, but that does not plug into the harness and you need to buy this um, adapter plug as well. You can get this uh, anywhere, you can get it from Holly, but you can also get it from Summit if you wanna check them out. Um, I have, I have SIN number 18318229596. Those are the two ends that you need. It's important that you have a clean power source for the ECU itself. So the battery in the ground, they want you to hook directly to the battery. Uh, dual post batteries work really well for that. The battery acts like a capacitor and kind of softens any jolts that um, alternator or power surges or AC kicking on and off would, would create and kind of softens that, gives a nice clean source for the computer. Um, it needs ignition as well, it needs ignition while you're cranking, otherwise it's a no start, so make sure you have a, uh, the, the key power has power while you're cranking. We've got the Terminator Max, which also comes with the transmission controls for the 65E, the 60E, the 80E, and a half a dozen more. It plugs into this. Um, you need your vehicle speed sensor and your main plug going into your transmission. Uh, the gray wire is for your brake switch, so, you need to hook that up to a brake light and that's to um, unlock the torque converter when you hit the brakes. You need to make sure that the key switch for the transmission is on a different source than the power source for the ECU. What happens is somehow it goes through the transmission and it'll actually back feed. So when you shut your key off, your engine doesn't shut off. So either if you only have one source, make sure that you stick it through a relay. If you put a relay in between, um, that will solve that problem. Otherwise, just find a different key source and it does not need power while you're cranking. Uh, we have one more wire, the turbine speed and we don't have that on this transmission. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about it right now because I didn't, do my, I didn't do my homework on that, but you can because it comes with a very nice instruction manual and it's all labeled in there. But we're gonna lay this onto the transmission, plug it in, get some power to the ECU, put our exhaust back on again, and we're pretty well ready to fire. Here we go. All right, so um, 
I buttoned up a few things. I moved the air filter back to inside because I got more room here now. What I'd like to do is angle that just a little bit, maybe maybe weld something on there, um, and then maybe put some sort of access or something in here that, that brings it fresh air into here. I disconnected my return and put it into a pail, drained the tank, and then cycled the key about 10 times and just got the dirty old fuel out. Put some fresh fuel in the tank. I mounted this MSD um, solid state relay um, just to keep things clean. Uh, you put ground on one side and you can turn the relays on either with key power or with the ground down below. It's pretty slick. One uh, main battery coming into the middle and then feeds going out. So this will turn on the two harnesses, one for the fuel injectors in the main harness and the other one is for the transmission. That turns on the valves, they're separate. Um, that is my fuel pump, which goes to the back. Um, I'm gonna mount all this stuff nice and neat in a little bit, but we're gonna try it, make sure. I hooked my fuel lines back up again. I had one fitting leak um, and we want to cycle that a bunch of times, make sure that nothing's leaking. Uh, we don't need any fires or anything. And now that I'm thinking about it, I might want to move this to the outside. What's worse, fuel leaking on your exhaust and uh, combusting instantaneously or fuel running down here and then hitting some electronic stuff and then exploding, I don't know. Once I have everything, I'll loom it nice and then we are good to go. Okay, so the wizard is very, very step-by-step. -step. Uh, I go to wizards, TPS auto set, um, ignition is on. We need to cycle the throttle. One, two, hit next. Uh, the auto set was successful, good. All right, now every car is different, so to figure out how to set up your wizard, your specs will be different than ours. Now, our setup is in the link down below, but if you want to check out how to set up the wizard, it's basically the same as our GTO. We don't want to duplicate ourselves, and the video's getting kind of long, so we're going to bypass that for now. Please cycle the ignition and complete the operation. Okay. All right, let's fire it up. Nervous, 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 nervous. Third time's the charm, right? Wow, that was easy. I did do an oil change. Nothing leaking, nothing spraying. No chunks. Woo! <laughs> I were leaving for LS Fest tomorrow morning, so that's good. <laughs> the only issue is I don't have the right injectors in there, and we'll put another injectors in at LS Fest, and then we'll get the guys to look at it there just in case, but that is success. Sound right, and I think that's the injectors. Firing on all eight. It's funny. I had this disconnected, massive vacuum leak. Let's fix that and see how it runs. All right, got that one going to the map. I got this one plugged. I got this one going to my blow off valve. That should be better. Let's try that before we get ahead of ourselves. That's what happens, get a little too excited. Let's see if it runs any better. is definitely too low but that sounds pretty sick Yeah. <laughs> I love that I got every light is working. 
<laughs> Put your seatbelt on. Don't forget about your seatbelt. Oh, right. <laughs> I think that one will go off. I think. Are you sure? <laughs> no! No, why not? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> We got to pull a lot of balls. We got to pull, pull some balls on the dash, yeah. <laughs> so this car, if you guys are new to the project, originally came from Japan. And Japan is a small island where driving is a luxury, so it did not have many miles on it. They put this body kit on it because it's not a true AMG. There was a Mercedes like this at LS Fest last year. We talked to that gentleman and his caught fire and burnt to a crisp. So as far as we know, this is still the only LS swapped W124. Hold on, wait. You're getting with it? This is what you're gonna look for. All right, so I crunched right before LS Fest to get the car ready and tidy together. We were waiting for some small parts. We got those. I was way behind, and I actually had the map sensor and the blow-off valve hoses in the wrong spots, which is why it was running like crap. LS Fest is amazing in the fact that Holly is very proud of the stuff that they build. They've got techs running around with golf carts willing to help and diagnose and uh, we fixed that pretty quick. So if you haven't hit up LS Fest in Bowling Green, Kentucky, they do it every September and there's also LS Fest West which we're hoping to hit with the Audi in the spring. Cool. Perfect, thanks man. Yeah. All right, back from LS Fest, there's a few things that uh, I had to change. I wasn't sure about this line right here coming off the intake. That actually goes to the brake booster for vacuum brakes. Even though it's boosted, when you shut off your throttle plates, when you hit the brake, um, this is under vacuum and your brakes still work. Um, blow off valve is on this one, which is in front of the throttle plate. So that when you um, close your throttle plate and your turbo is still spooling, if it's got nowhere to go, then all this air, it either stops the turbo dead or you want your blow off valve to open and get rid of that access air. The plug coming out of the harness right there goes to a relay. You can see the one missing in between the blue and the green there. So the fans will come on. Hopefully that keeps it cool enough. Um, I have to get another uh, bottle for the overflow, but this is right full. Bleed the head through the little vapor thing there. You can either pump that up until you see coolant coming out of there, or put a vacuum bleeder on there to suck that out. The only thing left to do is actually drive it. As long as I've got, it doesn't overheat on me. Should be okay. Sweet, speedo works. Nice. I shifted all the gears. That's good. I always enjoy. Enjoy first drives. <laughs> Does it look like I'm enjoying it? <laughs> Actually, this is going okay. It's hanging out at 199. Things are looking good. Alright. <laughs> so far, so good. This is good. This is good. I'm, this is okay. I'm okay with this. It's not getting hot. Oil pressure staying steady. Is that the exhaust. Huh. Everything seems okay. That was weird. Just heard a noise there. Something could have. Hmm. That's really odd. A little bit of smoke just burning all the extra shit off that was there. 
What was that noise? Excuse me, sir, can you get that oil leaker off my driveway? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely got oil there, and that is either these fittings right here or valve cover gasket. We'll have to take a look. Yep, that was the culprit. That one was loose. Tighten that back up again. Thanks to Toosley here. Nice to pull in on your test drive and fix it before you go home. Oh, I know what the noise was. Speedo quit. Oh, that's what the clunk was. Uh, it's going to the training shop next anyway. All right. <laughs> All right, so you guys know that we do tool reviews on stuff that we actually use and are proud of. And uh, we actually reached out to Insta360 because we also have tools in the audio video sector. Um, we saw what this camera can do and it was pretty impressive going all the way around. So we'll be using the Insta360 in a pile of our videos, including our viewer builds. If you've got something that you've built, something like this, and you want me to drive it and put it on the channel, absolutely want to do that. And the Insta360 is going to help us make a really cool video about that. All right, if you're thinking about getting an Insta360 ONE X yourself, now is the time to do it. Uh, they got a sale going on because of Black Friday. Maybe a great present for somebody for Christmas. And if you use the affiliate link down below, uh, then you can either pick between another free battery or an invisible stick, which is what we're using on this test drive here. All my numbers look good, temperature-wise, oil pressure-wise. I'm happy with that. From here, we're going to send it off to the transmission shop make sure that he did everything correctly. I think he wanted to adjust something. At the same time, we'll check out the line pressures, make sure that uh, everything's acting the way it is. It's shifting beautifully. Um, and then we'll also send it to an alignment shop because uh, it's just a little, little, I don't know, the tires are wearing funny. Um, the tires were completely shot before. And then we'll get it back and keep driving it but we're just doing limited stuff until the transmission shop gets their look at it. But so far, so good. Okay, so she's on the road, it's shifting. Uh, the coolants are staying where they are supposed to while we're driving. Uh, I got a little vibration in the steering wheel and a little vibration in the back. So it's gonna go off to an alignment shop. When the kids had it in Japan, I think they put a lowering kit in it without doing alignment. Tires were shaved like crazy. Um, it needs some brake work. New tires are on order. We wanna make sure that it's safe and uh, is able to stop and stick to the road when we start beating on a little bit. It's got a very mild tune in it right now from Holly, something nice and safe. Once we get everything else kind of sorted out from there, then uh, we can start playing with the timing and, and start playing with a little bit more of the boost. Back in 1994, AMG would have charged you $200,000 for a 375 horsepower V8 in one of these wagons. Now that would have been done by a team of AMG specialists that got the okay from Mercedes to do the swap. All your controls, dashes, everything would have worked out the exact same. With today's engines and technology, you can get a out of the box 450 horsepower engine and it does fit pretty decent once uh, you don't have to worry about cramming in a giant turbo. So how much did this one cost? Um, I got some unrealistic budgets from other people doing swaps online. Matt, thank you very much for that. <laughs> you make it seem a lot easier than it actually is. And I'm glad that those eight for eights are biting you in the ass too. But as for this one, uh, we budgeted somewhere around 10. We are about double that, I would assume, and I did not build near all of my time. I don't think I build a third of the hours that I have into this car, so we've got even more than that into it. Um, understandable, if I would do it again, I would do it without the turbo, do a naturally aspirated engine. Um, it just make it that much more easier. You don't lose your car for that long. Um, if you're gonna do the swap yourself, I highly recommend do a naturally aspirated. We'll get into the tuning and the turbo on that later, but thanks to Holly also for coming out with that Terminator and the Max to make that uh, swap so much quicker with the, without the tuning headaches. Uh, I've started the car in the cold and the hot with a hot engine, minus five out, and it starts every single time, idles properly, revs up properly, and makes it that much easier. So um, 
Lots of things to consider while you're doing it. It uh, does not make for one of the easier swaps that I've done. I'm gonna be married to this one and that's okay. We're gonna fix one problem at a time as they come up. It's a 25 year old car with a lot of different bits and pieces in it. Stick around for more videos. Um, they're coming, I guarantee you. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a very, very humbling and uh, learning experience. So here we go. And does that answer your question?